Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Mike Barker and today we're gonna change the oil in your 2013 and up RAV4. Let's do it. Before you start any of this, what you've gotta do is you've gotta go take your RAV4 for a quick little drive to get the engine up to operating temperature. How do you know it's up to operating temperature? Not a dumb question. What you'll see is this is your temperature gauge and the bar is right in the middle. That's where you want it to be when you do your oil change. I like to put the car up on a set of ramps. More sturdy, more safer, more good dirt. Er. Next up, we're gonna pop the hood. We're gonna remove the oil cap. Put it somewhere that you won't forget it. So here are the tools that you're gonna to need to do this job. Number one, an oil pan. The bigger, the better, because then you have less chance of it spilling out all over the floor. A 3 8 drive ratchet. Next up, I like to use a six inch extension for the 3 8 ratchet, or in my case, it's two three inches put together. It works. Next thing, a 14 millimeter socket. This is for the oil drain bolt. The RAV4 uses a filtered cartridge assembly. So in order to get the uh, housing off, you have to buy one of these. It's basically an oil filter cover wrench. Toyota says it's a special service tool. You can go to Napa, CarQuest, O'Reilly's, wherever, and pick one up. They're super common. For making sure everything goes back together correctly, a torque wrench. Lovely. The final piece of kit that you need is your oil filter. Oh look, somebody smartly wrote that on it because they have too many other oil filters on their shelf. Hmm. So this is the one that you need. It's a 04152YZZ or YZZ A1. I bought this one from Toyota. I'm not super anal about where you get your oil filter from. I know people will go up one side of me and down the other as far as, oh, don't recommend a Fram. Oh my goodness, you have to use a Purolator. I was at the Toyota dealership. They had this one in front of me. I bought it, it was convenient. The other thing too though that I noticed about this that's kind of nice, Toyota includes a detailed set of instructions in and on the box. Not, not just this level of detail. Also step-by-step -step instructions. So I mean, you cannot screw this up. You don't need a manual to do this. You don't even need this video. Inside, what you're gonna find is, this is the drain plug that helps you drain the filter housing before you spin the whole housing off. You get a set of O-rings, small one and a large one. The small one is for the housing drain plug. The larger one is actually for the filter housing itself. You get the filter cartridge. Now, when you're at the dealership, you also should get the crush washer for the oil drain plug. So that's it. There you go, everything you need to do this job. Let's get started. Okay, we're under the car here, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna drain the oil out of the crankcase now. Right here, this is a 14 millimeter bolt. We're gonna grab our 3 8 ratchet, 14 mil socket, spin this off, make sure we direct it into the drain pan, then we'll be in business. First things first though, eyeglasses and gloves. All right, it doesn't take much to break it free. Then you're just gonna spin it out. And there we are. That oil is pretty dirty. Not the dirtiest I've ever seen, but it's pretty dirty. So now, take your oil drain bolt, sit it somewhere you're not gonna lose it. Just keep it tidy. So while you've got the oil draining over the pan, what we're gonna go ahead and do is put our 3 8 extension into this plug and spin this plug out. Now, in my past experience, this plug, you'll try to turn this and the whole thing, the whole assembly will actually rotate out. What I might have to do is put a little leverage on this in order to break this free first. Just in case, move your oil pan back so you can still catch the drips coming out of the drain bolt, but so you can also catch anything that might come out of the filter. Eventually, there's gonna be a lot of stuff coming out of the filter here. It's just better to have it in place so that you're ready. Perfect. A little snap was all it needed. A little extra motivation. A little bit of oil came out, not a lot. So this came off all as one piece. There's actually an O-ring up in here still, so I'm gonna get a little pick and pull it out too, because you need to replace that. And there's your O-ring. Okay, so next up is 
our little spigot adapter here. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna push this up into the filter housing into this uh, brass opening here. Once you push it through, a gush of oil is gonna come out. So what they actually recommend is that you have a hose on the end of this. I've found as long as you have the oil pan on the floor here in a good position, it's a no mess operation anyway. Just be ready for the oil to come flowing out of this into your pan. Here it goes. Yeah, like I said, it's pretty easy. Ooh, does it ever stink though? While that's draining out, there's really not much to do. Maybe go grab lunch. I'd recommend a cold beer too, but uh, but you get to that point where you got one too many cold beers and you aren't doing helpful work anymore. We've got the oil all drained out now. It's time to remove the spigot and then we're gonna take off the housing. So spigot, twist and pull, there we go. So when you get this out, it's a throwaway part. It goes in the garbage. Next up, you're gonna take your oil filter housing wrench. You're gonna use the center slats. There are three on each side. One, two, three, one, two, three. Make sure you've got it, the center one, on the center tab. Makes your life easier. Make sure your oil pan is still handy because there may be some oil that comes out of this. Oh, I don't have my safety glasses on. So with your safety glasses on, go. Lefty Lucy. There you go. Like I said, should be a little oil inside. Just a dribble though. So now throw this old filter in the garbage and we move on to the next step. We're gonna take a, just a light wipe inside here with a clean rag just to see if there's any debris or anything out of normal. I don't suspect there will be, but better safe than sorry. Try to get right down to the bottom of it. Get it as much as you can. That looks pretty darn good. I mean, it's dirty oil, but there's no big chunks of anything in there. Everything looks really good and clean. You're also gonna to wanna to go ahead and remove the O-ring that's on here, located here. It's kind of hard to see with the camera because everything's so oily right now. I'm just gonna pick that off. Take a clean rag, give a wipe around the threads and the O-ring sealing surface that we just pulled that O-ring off of. So another thing, the O-ring that we took out of the bottom, this surface, give that a wipe, make sure it's got no debris in it too. That looks pretty darn good. Now we're to the point we're gonna reassemble things. Take our O-ring kit that we've got. The small O-ring is for the housing drain bolt. The big O-ring is for the housing itself. So with both of these O-rings, we're gonna go ahead and apply some clean, fresh 0W20 engine oil all over these. Make sure that your fingers are nice and clean. Might have a little oil on them, but for the most part, there's no big grits, nothing like that. You're gonna just get a little skim of motor oil here. There we go, I can feel it on my finger. And go around both of the O-rings. Make sure they're lubed nicely. They don't need to have a lot of oil on them, just enough to help with the reinstallation of everything. So we'll take our large one. I like to sit it right in the groove here. This is the groove that it's going in. You can stretch this o-ring a little bit putting it on. Just try not to twist it though. So that's done. Okay, and then the small o-ring right here. Now if it seems like the o-ring is a little bit loose or it seems to want to pop out of this groove, just give it a press and it should seat right in there. I can't remember which vehicle it was that it said to do this on, but I always like to pre-lube the fins of these oil filters and even the spin-on oil filter types. The Toyota instructions don't say that you have to do this. It's just something that I've always done. Less dry time on startup, maybe. Up to you, your mileage may vary. We're gonna go ahead and put the filter into the housing. Press it on. It is spring-loaded, so it does move a little bit. That's normal. We're almost ready to put this back in the car. One other thing we can do first, though, the plug for the housing. It's a good thing I have that clean rag. Well, it was clean. It's pretty clean. Clean off the plug. Looks good. Check that our O-ring is still nice and clean. Maybe give it a light wipe first. Let's spin this on. So you will torque this on with the torque wrench after the housing's back in place. So just finger tight, just snug. All right, now we're ready to put this back in the car. 
Okay, so we're gonna start buttoning this up now. The old washer gasket here on the drain bolt is still in place, so we've gotta pick that off with our little metal pick. Whoop, <laughs> right in the camera. Awesome, clean our drain bolt off, put our new flat washer on our bolt, just like that. Now, I'm gonna give this one wipe, one final wipe, and we're gonna jam this bolt right back in there. All right, let's torque that up right now. Got our torque wrench, got our 14 mil socket. The torque wrench should be set to 30 foot-pounds for this bolt. We're gonna go ahead and tighten that until we hear it click. There we go. Now we're back to the filter housing. What you might wanna do first is give this a light pass with a clean just in around this lip. There we go. Now let's jam this up in here now. So you kind of have to have a little bit of a feel for this because it is a plastic housing. You don't want to cross thread anything. For the most part, Toyota was pretty smart as they always are and they used a really big thread. So the chances of cross threading this are very small. So you feel it start to turn a little stiffer. That's when it meets the O-ring. So at this point, we've got to switch over to our filter housing wrench. We've got our oil filter housing wrench attached to our torque wrench and the torque value for the housing is 18 foot pounds. Make sure we line up everything properly here. Away we go. Now it's turning its way in past that O-ring. That's why we oiled it up earlier though. So the O-ring would just gently compress and slide inside the housing. Okay, so they just pretty much bottomed out right there. So now that's it. I don't know if you guys can hear that. That's torqued. 18 foot pounds for the housing. Now we're not done here though, because the housing drain bolt has to be torqued to nine foot pounds. There we go, nine foot pounds. Doesn't take much. Oh, and the fire department's going in the background. Better to live next to the fire department than 50 miles from it though. All right, so that's it. We're good to put some oil in this thing. Thumbs up. As you can see here, I've got my funnel ready. I've got my Zero W20 motor oil, which is the recommended oil for RAV4s of this era. This container, you can't see it, but it actually holds 4.4 liters, which is the exact amount that the manual says you require if you do a filter and a complete oil change. This container should be the exact amount that we need. However, I'm not gonna quite put all of this in. I'm gonna put in like 4.1 or two liters. I'm gonna leave a little bit in the container just in case there's any residual motor oil in here. And what I'll do is I'll start it up, check for leaks, shut it off, and then top it up right to where it needs to be. You don't want to pour this too fast because in my experience, the oil doesn't go down into the cylinder head very quick on these engines at all. That's probably good right there. Now we'll throw the cap back on. Snug it up a little bit. All right, we're ready to restart the car. Good stuff. This is so dirty. Yeah. Okay, cool. We're ready to put the car back on the ground. If you're on jack stands, just sit the car right back on the ground right now. Wait for a couple seconds, check the oil level. Just, it, it's not a precise oil check at this point. It's just to check that you've got engine oil showing on the dipstick. If you're on ramps, you're gonna start the car, back down off the ramps, let it idle for 30 seconds or so, check for oil leaks at the same time. After 30 seconds, shut it off. Chances are job's done. You could do another quick check around on the floor just to make sure there's no oil leaks. Chances are you're gonna be fine. If by some remotely small chance you start the car and it smashes and bangs and goes on and does really nasty shit. I mean, nasty stuff. Shut the car off. Something is awry. Maybe you didn't put oil in the car. That's a possibility. If so, don't blame me. I showed you how to do that. This is the point where we finish up. So let's get at it. Just gonna sit this down, not latch it because we have to open it again anyway. Check for leaks. We're good. Check the oil level one last time. So one other thing though, someone at the Toyota dealer told me that you have to wait 20 minutes to check the oil one time. So I'm gonna wait 20 minutes. If that's what Toyota says, then that's probably what you should do. It just seems kind of excessive. Yeah. So it's 20 minutes later. Time to check the oil one last time. Clean rag. Put the dipstick back in, check her out. 
Just as I thought, it'll take that whole jug of oil. It's down just under half a liter, so I'm gonna top it up with the rest of the oil. This job is done. So that is it for me, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget, like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and please, please spread the good word. You can do this stuff yourself. It's not hard. Tune in next time. Thanks, guys.